in jolly old England it came about that the land was fine but there was no route for the fine old silks to go abroad we could not take them out we could not take them out well john bull's men came to the north of england to show their worth to show those latvian some steel across the border they went forth across the border they went forth on eden's ice they marched so brave the latvians they could not save his towns we burnt his people killed our flag so proud did wave the union jack did wave when riga port was in our reach the cruel winter it did teach oh boys that life is but a whim and cold a soul can bleach and cold a soul and bear he smells our blood he sees his chance with our senses dulled and like a vulture at the kill begins the dance of death the dance of death as the english boys limp to the border with scarce a sign of their old order with lat and rusky as their order the whole disgrace a cue for murder the whole disgrace a cue for murder well we got is a fine old boat with ships that sail across the Get up. But it's warm here. I just want to lie here and sleep. 
Get up, you piss bastard. It is your duty to warn them. But we're defeated. The battle is lost. I just want to lie here and sleep. Come on now. Our leaders are honorable men. They would not abandon us. Up.
not lie here in the snow. Get up, you bastard. You are beautiful, Mom. Like a young girl. Not a blemish from the child. sweet little man. He would be six years old. They've arrived, ma'am. The guests are here. Those that are coming. head back. Cook says they all came together. They must be frightened. All the rumors, Ma. This and that. This and that. They say it's not the party they came for. Cook says it's for the safety. All together in this house. They'll be looking to the master for guidance. He won't be guiding for a while now, Mom. You've exhausted him. Excessive inclemency of the weather is quite without precedent. <laughs> it's certainly the worst I've known. <laughs> Walton, my uh, good neighbour Walton, has just returned from Carlisle with some strange tale. Oh, really? The town is in a panic. Everyone's saying that uh, Brook Village has been attacked and burned to the ground by Latvians. <laughs> Latvians? <laughs> Lord Harry, whatever next. <laughs> Latvians! I wouldn't have thought Latvians would have had the courage, let alone the wit, to come over this side of the border. <laughs> I'm afraid that's really rather hard to credit, Mr. Smith. Begging your pardon, Your Excellency, but uh, my neighbour said there was little doubt in the matter. There was but one survivor. He hid in a tree and witnessed the butchering of the entire village. The women were subjected to acts of foul indecency, as is the way of soldiers. No, oh, really. And then they and their children were bashed and spiked without feeling until death mercifully ended their miseries and, and reunited them. May God preserve us. She's just frightened. No, gentlemen. My neighbor spared me no detail. As you do not spare us, Mr. Smith. Janik, my dear chap. Your neighbor, Mr. Smith. A reliable church-going man. Yes, sir, like myself. A devout man. 
He says it was the Latvians. Mm. Helped by uh, Russians. Russians, eh? Das bekommt sehr interessant. Come, come, Smith. What would Russians be doing in that part of the world? The survivor saw it all. The last person to die was the village master. He was taken out of the village and hanged. Just before his execution, a Russian officer approached Is him. your neighbor familiar with the uniform of a Russian officer? Ah. My neighbor was only repeating the survivor's story. <laughs> As you, in your turn, repeat his. It is a game of Russian whispers. Just before he was hanged, the doomed man was made to listen to a proclamation read to him by the uh, Russian officer. In Russian, of course. In both Russian and English, Mr. Laidlaw, sir. Otherwise, the village master would not have understood it. Or oh, us, for that matter. My neighbor wrote down the proclamation as it was told him. And I have made a copy. You have it, Smith. I do, sir. I do. I do not approve of the rumor. This is my house. And I do not approve. However, I do not want to spoil the party. It is New Year's Eve. Read on, Mr. Smith. Read on. The Russian people deplored the cowardly and unprovoked attack by England on the Latvian people. The Russo-Latvian Treaty of November this year, 1884, declares all English persons to be enemies and therefore treated without mercy nor given trial. I hereby Order you to be hanged. Long live Tsar Alexander III and the Archbishop of Riga. God was on our side. I always felt that. Never doubted it, not for a moment until we took that fourth town, or was it the fifth? About halfway to Riga, along the frozen Eden River. It was large, maybe 20,000 persons, merchants, farm owners, a neat town, soft. I'll never forget that big house burning. Oh, what a sight that was. The heat of it. Someone said it was a famous collection of books. The house was in a big square and the heat from the fire melted all the snow in the square into a lake. And all the snow from the facing roofs came sliding off into the lake. It was like a strange springtime, but in the dark. The only light coming from the fire. I'll never forget. We took that town. There was no resistance, and we took it. Food, drink, and women. 
the spoils of war there for the taking. I took no women, but I held a gun to the fat merchant's balls. He thought his wife should be spared. He offered his money. We took it. He watched quietly, the tears rolling down his jolly red cheeks, while the men took her. They spared her life. I moved freely round the town while the big house burned. I spent some time in a house with others. In a house. And gradually the noises died down. The screaming. The laughing. The breaking of glass. The music. The gunshots. The crying. The whimpering. The fire died down. A solitary dog barked. And it began to be very cold. Everyone was sleeping. Or dead. The grey light started to come from the window. I decided to walk. Stiff with cold, I found myself walking towards that square where the house had burned. When I got there, I... It was gone completely. The great house had disappeared. Hoffentlich ist das nicht zu spät. Hab keine Angst. Es wird aufhören zu schneien. Ich bin ganz sicher. Vielleicht sollten wir doch lieber heute Nacht noch abreisen. Das wäre unser Cousin gegenüber sehr unhöflich. Ich habe ein großer Erbnis Oh, General, so have I. So have I. Yes, I, I thought something was smelling good. <laughs> I'm told oh, but this is a hot bed That is me. Bishop, I'm sure you try to frighten me. Oh, no, my dear, I believe it to be true. Hmm? He's got a mind like a cesspit. Hmm? Young virgins <laughs> sacrificed on the altar. Hmm? Priests and altar boys. What did I tell you? Acts of Satanism, <laughs> witchcraft. <laughs> God protect the young English soldier boy from those filthy Latvians, my dear. Still has the smell of drink on. Mm. Is this, um... Again, Mr. Smith's tale of the Russo-Latvian treaty, Mr. Lerdl? No, Bishop. This is another tale. Ah. May I continue? Of course. My head forester was travelling to the border and became caught in that blizzard last when... No, Tuesday. He went to the coach house at Rodham, and the landlord was pleased to see him. The inn has been deserted since the war, and the hospitality was, I suspect, liquid. Late in the evening, a young peasant woman from one of the villages appeared. She was travelling south, without a coat, her dress blood-stained. Understandably, she was near exhaustion and half dead with cold. The girl claimed that her village had been attacked by our own boys. Some 20 of the king's own border regiment had come into the village calling themselves communardist. They took food and weapons from the homes. The girl's husband intervened and was killed. None of the other villages were harmed, but forced to listen to another proclamation. Villagers! Fellow Englishmen! We 
the commune artists of the Border Regiment invite you to join us in our common struggle. All over Europe, your brothers are fighting this same cause. We have no quarrel with the Latvians or the Russians. Our quarrel is with the English master. Today, one of our brothers was attacked by two members of this community. We had no option but to kill this man. His wife can expect no mercy. No! 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 In this struggle, there is no room for the faint-hearted. There is no room for the coward who would wear the yoke of slavery. Englishmen, I invite you to join in this fight. She plays well, Cousin Frederick. As you know, General, the Latvian army is considered something of a joke in military circles. It's my opinion the Russians are involved. But we've no quarrel with the Russians. For many years now, the Russians have looked for a conflict on the western border which would give them an excuse to expand their empire to the west. Given them that excuse. Das denkbar beste Weihnachtsgeschenk. <laughs> An excuse to move into Latvia? Into England. Schleswig-Holstein, Austria. 
smoke of von Roon, they are our friends. Prussia has the strongest army in Europe. You are our allies. Yes? Tell me, what will Prussia do? 